My quest for the ultimate portable editing hub continues, and it continues to improve to a certain extent, except it's not getting any smaller. In fact, the new version dubbed 3.0 looks even more like something you'd find in the world of Fallout, and until now, the idea of an SSD-based version has not come to life. I'm Justin, and welcome to my tech channel. This is one of my larger, more time-consuming 3D print projects, and in this series I take you along in my struggle of creating a work-away-from-home setup that actually works. The entire hub is printed with this Sunlu black PLA at 210 Celsius for the nozzle and 60 for the bed. I use this 3D lac to keep it from warping, although this particular PLA is quite good. In total, the 3D printed parts cost around 7 euros and 25 cents. To hold the whole thing together, I mostly use these 30 mm bolts, which are friction fit into the design. I think that currently the hub is in a good spot in terms of usability. I've added new I.O. to the front, decreasing the setup time at my job, where I need to connect to a server and, and external monitor. In the previous version this was a hassle to do because the ethernet plug was deep inside the case and every time I needed to remove the cable I had to poke at it with a screwdriver. The HDMI port was hidden underneath which was also a hassle to access but both those things are now dealt with by adding an ethernet extender and a HDMI extension. These are friction fit into the IO plate which went through multiple design overhauls during the process. The addition of a VESA mount has also made the whole unit a lot more desk friendly. If you see my last desk setup video you'll know that I like to mount stuff to monitor arms, keeping it easily accessible and also manoeuvrable in case I need to route new cables. In the setup, the loop deck was also mounted on a monitor arm, improving the ergonomics to a certain extent. The problem with my last version was that I'd have to remove the loop deck every time I got home, making the whole idea of a time-saving device not so time-saving anymore. Other improvements like an external audio input and output device are welcome additions but up until now haven't been used too much. The idea was that this could double as some kind of online meeting hub and I'd be able to plug in a Rode Wireless Go freeing up some of my maneuverability. It seemed like a good way to keep myself occupied while still being involved in the conversation but this was axed because I didn't have enough room to put the cam link and well we don't have that many online meetings anymore. Other than that though, not much has changed since my previous model. It's still printed with black PLA, and I still made some mistakes in regards to tolerances. Basically, the holes for mounting the bolts are too large, resulting in these bulges at the side. It still holds two four terabyte drives, although this is at the back of the unit, not at the front. It works relatively well weight-wise, as it's no longer prone to tipping over, but it does result in my hand resting on the drives while working. Is that bad? I'm not sure. I'm glad I didn't get rid of those though, because because recently I went to Austria and I made nearly 3 terabytes of footage, mostly time lapses. But this hub made it very easy to quickly import and structure everything. Due to the nature of having time lapses shot in 6K RAW, I wasn't able to edit it on vacation. Doing so would be kind of a waste of time. However, I do like to colour grade photos here and there for Instagram or just sending to my friends. And that works very nicely with the loop deck as well. The T5 has moved to the top of the caddy and has been thinned down to the point where I can't actually keep the SSD in the device while it's in my bag. This is kind of a hassle and something that needs to be fixed in coming versions. Cables are also something that's changed. At the moment I have the Ugreen USB-C hub plugged into the 10 gigabit USB-C port on the anchor hub. It's less stable than having two cables come out separately but it saves a little space. Most of the I.O. is then plugged into the Ugreen USB-C hub. The last thing which I forgot to show in my previous video is the implementation of this lid. This keeps the loop deck safe while it's in my bag, very sensual, as one of these costs nearly 500 euros, and shoving it in a bag without any form of protection would most likely result in something breaking, even though the build quality is quite nice. In my previous video I mentioned I might want to try and do this with a Thunderbolt 4 hub, however upon further research those apparently need power again defeating the whole idea of portability. So for now, this is it, and for the foreseeable future, it will stay this way, as I believe I've found a comfortable stagnation point between functionality and the ultimate design.